83. חצייה לבית המנוגה וחצי חצייה לפסול את הגבייה. 83, the top of the page. תנא וחצי חצייה לטמא טומאת אוכלים. So we discuss in the Mishnah, we're dealing here in the Hilchot טומאה. Uh, We have a portion in the Torah that dealing with a uh, certain leprosy in the uh, house. And with that, we talk yesterday at length about the measurement. We talk about uh, eggs and, and the, uh, the measurement of cow. Let's just review for those who walk in. Um, in the loaf that the Mishnah uh, described, It's based on the machloket, on the disputation between Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Yochanan ben Broca. Kav, we explained yesterday, that is 24 eggs. Now, if you think the way that Rabbi Shimon said it, he said that you go and you say that kikar, the loaf, is basically um, one third. Chetzia bait menuga, half in that the house that have the leprosy, which is one six. Chatzi chetzia, half of the half, which means is one of twelve. And then we said chatzi chetzi chetzia, which again it's one of twenty four. So now it's so simple, according to Tosfot, according to Rashi. If you tell me that the cav measurement is 24 eggs and you divided it to 24, it means, according to Rabbi Shimon, it's the shi'u tum'at ochalin, the measurement of food ritual impurity is the egg side, which is 124 of cav. Rabbi Yochan ben Broca, it's different. Because if you measure that, it turned to be three quarter of egg, because chaser reva, it's missing one quarter. So when we use the term of egg, it has to be only according to Rabbi Shimon. That's the way it was fought, and Rashi understand. So the Gemara asked, "V'tana didan the Tana in the Mishnah, my Tama lo Tana itum atochalim? Why he didn't mention?" with this measurement uh, that it's a um, applied to ri- ritual impurity of food. So they said, Mishum de lo shavu adadi, because the measurement of the um, uh, uh, those different type, it's not precisely identical. So uh, when you measure this, it's not exactly half amount of ritually impure food that disqualified one from eating truma. So again, we go here by Rabbi Shimon. And later we elaborate on that. The Tanya. Kamashiu Chatzifras. How much is a half of pras? Which is a half of the uh, loaf. That it's a food hmm. that make the gviya pasul. So he said, שתי ביצים חסר כמעט, two eggs, a little less than that. We use the Dibra Abiyuda, that's a Abiyuda hole, that's the small eggs. Rabbi Yossi אומר, שתי ביצים שוחקות. Rabbi Yossi says, the two large eggs, slightly larger one than average. You know, you go to the store, you see different size. שיער רבי, שתי ביצים ועוד. So Rabbi measure, the half of pras, and he come to a little bit more than two egg. So, um, uh, as, as we said, that that's what the Rashi come up with all this measurement, that, um, that um, one is 24, as I said earlier. Kama ve'od, 
What is the exactly the addition, the small addition? Echad me'esrim bebetsa, one of twenty of regular um, uh, egg, which means that is one tenth of uh, beitza. Ve'ilu legabei tumat ochalid. However, when you talk about concerning the impurity of food, so he said, Tanya, Rabbi Nathan, Rabbi Dosa, Amru, Kebeitza, Shamru, Kamoa, Vechi, Klipata. So they, they, they both said that it's a measure of uh, egg, egg bark, which is, they said, um, itself, it, uh, equivalent to it without its shell. So it's, again, it's not precisely half of any measurements giving in a half of price. So, another opinion, Amar Afram Bar Papa, you remember Afram Bar Papa, that we yes. finish Masechet all the time with his name? Amar Avchizda, Zo Divrei Rabbi Yudha and Rabbi Yossi. That's the word of Rabbi Yudha and Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Chachami Omrim, Kebeitza Umechza Sochakot. So he just said that uh, it's a one and the one large, um, uh, half large egg bark. Uman Chachami, and who was the sages? Rabbi Yochan ben Broca. So as we said, half of the half, it's a, a little, it's a <laughs> egg and a half. So the Gemara said Pshita, it's obvious. So um, what Rav Chizda wants to teach us? So they said, Sochakot atala shmuinan. They want to tell us that the measurement is uh, performed with large egg. So ki ata ravdimi, amar ravdimi is the one who always mentioned that he came from Israel to Babylon. So he said, Shiger bonyos le rabbi modia dekundis. So bonyos sent, the person, that's the name of a person, a sent. Rabbi Yudan see a measure, a modia, of se'a from the place called Kundis, uh, uh, the, the Neusa, the place called Neusa. Veshi'e Rabbi matanu shva esre be'in. And Rabbi a measure is found, it contained 217 eggs. So the Gemara asks why it's so large. Ha se'a. Deheicha, what is that? Uh, what from where is it? What's the measurement is based? So he said, "Ida mitbarit me'avar ba'in barbavia." If you go by the measure of the the uh, one in the desert, in the wilderness, which is basis of the Torah measurement uh, of volumes, it's uh, difficulty that the eye is composed of six kav, which is uh, each kav is equivalent to four log. And each log is equivalent to size of a uh, egg bark. Vidi Rushalmit, if they, um, which means that, that that measurement is 144 egg bark. But if you go by the Rushalim, the way that they they, uh, they measure, then the Se'a has to be Me'a Shivim Vesholosh, 173. Vidi Tsipurit, Matan Vesheva'ya. And you go by the Tsipuri, it's in North Israel. The measurements were, um, once again, increased in Tsipori. So you add another fifth to the one you have in Yerushalayim, and you end up by how much? By 207. So Rashi here explained, Rashi here explained that uh, How, how they measure it in Tsipori. We call it Shtut Milebar. So um, here I explain in my book, Biurak Lomar Berashi al Ashas. The Rashi used here in the Klomar to um, the addition that you use the Shem Milebar, it's an addition. Why basically we need to use the measurement of all of the Tsipori and Yerushalmit? Uh, what's the purpose of that? So he, he explains that, uh, that the, basically the way that you uh, use it in the Torah term is an addition here, uh, since you use the, the Tzipori. But again, um, if you wish, you can have it 
at length in my um, writings. Anyway, Le'olam de Tzipurit. So they said actually the measure based on the one in Tzipori, which means um, uh, the question come back. So since it's um, the Bunyas send the Rabbi measurement of 217 eggs and not 207, uh, so he must bring the amount of Chala giving to the Kohen and add it to them. So, in other words, the measure is a little lo larger in the Se'a, but if it used for flour, and you deduct the amount uh, due to the chala. So you're left with exactly one se'ah, which is 207 egg bark. That's the Rashi way of understanding. So now the Gemara examined that. And they said, chalta kama avyan. What's the amount of chala, the, the, how many egg bark it is? Is it? So they said, tamni, it's egg, eight eggs. Eight egg bugs, which is 124 of 207. So they said, So now it remained less than 217 egg bug. So because even you add another eight egg bug for the chala to the 207, will have only 215 egg bug which is almost 216 to the more precise, which is still less than 217. You must bring the excess amount of Rabbi Udanasi, little more than he included in his measure, and add this to them, which means in Rabbi Udanasi calculation, he did not factor the dechala that had to be separated. Instead, the egg bag he used uh, to measure the se'ah were small egg bag. Consequently, 120 of an egg bag must be added for each one. Since 120 of the 207 is roughly 10, the total amount equals to 217 egg bag. So they said, Ihachei have a late fee. If so, that's still slightly more than 217 egba. So he said, Since it's not more than 217 egg bucks by whole egg, he did not count it. Tanu Rabana. The sage is taught in a brighter. Se'a Yerushalmit Yetera al Se'a Midbarit Beshtut. He said that um, by the way here in my book Biwak Loma Berashi I have a long 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 explanation of this sugya. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, in Daf Yomi, it's unlike Shiur Beyun. We don't have a time to do that. Anyway, Tanu Abanan. Se'a Yerushalmit yetera al midbarit b'shtut. Shel Tziporit yetera al Yerushalmit b'shtut. Nimtzet shel Tziporit yetera al midbarit b'shlish. We said that Yerush the Se'a of Yerushalmit, the Jerusalem Se'a, is larger than the, the desert Se'a by 1.6. It's called Shtut. You see it in a lot of measurement in Shtut. When you remember we talk about making profit, etc., etc., it's also the same measurement. Yeah. And then it's Ipori, it's louder than Yerushalayim Se'ah by 1.6. Mm -hmm. Consequently, a Se'ah of Tsipori is larger than the, the desert Se'ah by one third. So, the rival said in a duo that that's most probably because the Sanhedrin that was the place that they, they are, uh, dwell when, when they make those measurements and that's uh, the reason why they uh, use it. For example, um, the Yerushalayim Se'ah, it was um, during the time that King Solomon 
reign the Beit Hamikdash, the Temple, until the destruction of the Second. So they, it was uh, they had the Sanhedrin, the Great Sanhedrin was in Yerushalayim. Uh, the Tzipori Se'a, um, it's because they, uh, uh, it was a time that the, the Bet Adin Agadol, the High Supreme Rabbinic Court, was in Galilite, in Tzipori, at the time that Rebbe was uh, in charge. That's arrived in Eduyot, Chapter 1, Mishnah 2, and the Rashi is there. So they said, Shlish <coughs> Deman. So now we examine it said one third of which measurement ilay mashlish de midbarit michde shlish de midbarit kama ave arbaim utam et mania if you tell me that it's the measurement of the desert so how much it's a forty eight forty eight egba vilu utfa shtin utlat and and uh, if you have the ed, the you yet a, a difference between the wilderness and Tsiporisea, it's 36 egg bark. So Tsiporisea, as we said, it's a 207, which is the in the wilderness, it's, it's only 144. So he said, the Ela means you have to go by one third of the um, the Ushalayim, Jerusalem, Sea. How much is it? 173. So he said, if you go that, So one third of the Esea, how much is 58? Lata, less one third. The difference between the wilderness and Tsipori is 66. And the Tsipori is so you must say that it's referring to one third of Tsipori, Se'a. One third of Se'a, how much is it? It's a 71, le, uh, 71 less one third. And it's the difference between the wilderness Se'a and Tsipori Se'a is 36. Uh, so it means that it's not exactly one third according to any of known Se'a measurements. So Rabbi Yirmiya came up and he came with a new idea. He said, Rabbi Yirmiya came up and he said, You turn out that the Tzipori is, is one, it's close to one third more than one in the wilderness. And one third of what? It's um, close to a half of the wilderness, which is 72. Because the full the wilderness Se'a is um, 144. So uh, they said, Ravina attacked this idea of Rabbi Yirmi and he said, Midei Karov, Karov Ktiv. And he said that the brighter stead close to one third of Tsipori or Se'a or close to a half of the wilderness Se'a. Um, that because the brighter is speaking about the exact amount. So he said, Ela. אמר רבינה, הכי כאמר רבינה, זה דאצ דה ווי שהוא נרד. נמצאת שליש של ציפורי, בי ועודיות של רבי, יתרה על מחצה של מדברית בשליש ביצה. He said that one third of ציפורי שאה, together with the excess amount of רבי יהודה נשיא, is greater than a half of the wilderness שאה of 72 egg bugs, by only one third of an egg. It means that the Tsipori Se'a, it's 207 egg bar, added to the excess amount of Uber and a sea of 120 of egg bar, for each amount of total of 217, one third is 72 and one third egg bar. Another thing in regard to the measurement, the Torah said in Bamidbar, in Book of Numbers, chapter 15, Tanu Rabbanan, ראשית הריסותיכם חלה תרימו תרומה. So they said you should set apart a cake of a first of your dough as a gift, like the gift of the threshing floor, so shall you set it apart. Which means before you eat, you take a part of that uh, uh, a bread and you bring it as a uh, special contribution to the Kohen. 83b so the Gemara said, what is the quantity of the dough? 
So, to, so we have to separate. He said, "Kedei arisoteichem, the one amount of you do, the ham arisoteichem. How much is it? Kedei isat hamidbar, the amount of do that they use in the wilderness. The ham isat hamidbar, and how much is it? The chtiva ra'omer asirit ha'efau. We said in the book of Shmot in Exodus chapter sixteen that the the omer is tenth part of the efa. The Ifa is the, is the three Se'a, which is 18 Kav of 72 Log. So the Omer is one-tenth of this measure. Nikanamru, from here we derive this calculation. Shiv'a revaim kemach ve'od chayevet bechalash em shisha shal Yerushalmi, shem shisha shal Tzipori. So he said that, that, that seven quarters of cow of flour and more and more is obligated in Chala it's equal to six quarter cow of Yerushalayim measure which is five quarter cow of Tzipori measure Mikan Amru Ha'ochel Kemida Zohar Ebar Ezerim Vorach when we eat roughly that measure it's, uh, it's uh, healthy which means the measurement that Hashem said that God said that people should collect it for mana it's um, it's a amount that the person need when people ask me many times issue about um, you know making a living etc some people say that they make a lot of money but they still feel that they can hardly finish the month etc etc I said what I heard from my teachers that since the mana from heaven God provided as long as the person did the basics basis effort what a person need the only thing is a person need to calculate it, his expense to see if this really examine it carefully if this is what I need because if you think deeply God created all these beautiful animals and they don't have a degree and they don't have a business but they have food mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. so it means that God we said it open your hands that God provided the food to every single person according to his or her needs which means what we understand from that that there is a measure of manna from heaven that God told the people that's the amount you need to go out and collect so, so here the rabbis derive that if a person take the eat rough of this amount each day is healthy because he's able to eat a proper meal. So it's like Bari, uh, Umevorach, that he is, he is a bless. Um, it's a, uh, we said, they, they said that um, one of the blessings, the Torah said, which means, it's one of the reasons we said the Birkat Amazon, the blessing of the meal, it's because it's not enough that God provided the food. We need to have the digestive system that can take the food and process it properly. I remember when I was a rabbi in New Jersey for five and a half years, so we have a congregant who is extremely wealthy. And one time they made, the family made for him a, a, a birthday, he lost his wife, so they made a very big birthday for him. So he said to me in Yiddish, he said, he was a survivor, a survivor of the Shoah. He says, I can, I try to translate it. He says, how good is all this delicious food since I can't eat it? You have a strict digestive system. Is a system with medication, whatever it takes, that his digestive system only take a certain liquid and only in certain amount and only certain very specific food that he can eat. Otherwise, God forbid, he end up one, two, three in a hospital. So he said, how good is all this wealth and all this beautiful meal? And they made for him unbelievable beautiful meal with all the guests and friends. He says to me, he sat next to me and he says, so how good is it? So the blessing is not enough that you have the ability to put the food on the table. Mm-hmm. The blessing is the ability to digest it and, and be uh, satisfied. And the, the intestinal system... Uh, processes properly. So he said, 
הרי זה בריא ומבורך, so, so he is blessed. Um, um, however, יתר על כן, רעב טעם, but if a person eat more is a gluten, you see that in few places in a shas, that someone who's uh, like um, eating more than he basically needs. פחות מכאן, מקולקל במרב. If he eat less than this, it's a damage to his bowl and he must see to his health. Now we're going to a new direction. It's a Mishnah. We talk about um, continuation of a subject of um, joining alleyway and Eruvei Tchumim. So he said, Anshei Chatzer ואנשי מרפסת. זה בלקני. So, let me use the pictures from מאורות הדעה. Picture number 274. Everyone see it? Yes? No? Yes. Yes? Okay. אנשי חצר. The residents of houses that open directly into courtyard. Look what happened. You see how it's built? Yes. So they said, אנשי חצר ואנשי מרפסת שכחו ולא ערבו. כל שהוא גבוה עשרה טפחים מהמרפסת, פחות לכאן, מכאן לחצר. So he said, These residents, so they, they open directly into courtyard, and the residents of the apartments that open onto balcony, so the stairs lead down to the courtyard, for God did not establish an Eru between anything in the courtyard, then that is a ten hand breadth high, the amount of a, or a post is part of the balcony. So the resident of the apartment Uh, the post or mount then uh, is a lower than a height um, is part of the courtyard. So here is the post. So Rashi explained that the domain of the, the uh, shoot me pass it, it belongs to uh, this part and not the people in the yard. You see how they made it. And you see where is the, the entrance and how it works. So basically that's the Mirpese, that's the balcony. Now he said, Chuliyat Abo Ve'asela Gvohin Asara Tfachim La Mirpese Pachot Mikan Lechatzer If you take a embankment amount of a uh, citron or a rock that um, that is a ten hand breadth high they belong to the balcony and pachot mikan lechatzer but lower than this it may use only by inhabitants of the courtyard bamedvarim amurim what we are speaking here about bismucha what is a, a near the balcony aval bemufleget but if it's far away from the balcony afilu gavoa asara tfachim lechatzer even if it's a ten hand breadth high the right to use the embankment or round goes to the member of the courtyard ve'ezo yi smucha כל שנה רחוקה ארבעה טפחים. What is considering near? Anything that is not forehand removed from the balcony. So you have to measure four hands. The minute it's exceeded more than four hands, then it's no longer considering a near סמוכה. So the Gemara asks, פשיטה. That's obvious. And they said, לזה בפתח ולזה בפתח, היינו חלון שבין שתי חצירות. So they said, if the, the, you see this, the, the, the next one, יש רשות אחת רש"י, שסמוכה להן, 
ונוכל לשתיהן להשתמש בה. Because you have one domain that you can use for both. This is less than 10 hundred. So both can use it. It's convenience for both. So that's the reason why we mentioned that. And in my book, we have the Kloma Berashi Alashas. Rashi here have the, the word Kloma. So in my book, I explain this. It's a long explanation, but uh, um, basically the, the, um, the base here is the, the, when you're dealing with uh, this type of uh, situation that it's, um, you don't, you don't know if it's, um, what's the, the, uh, the easiest way, and you said in the, in the, in the basic idea that it's both of them, so <laughs> here I, I it's a long, long, I based this on, on the book Minchat Yehuda, Avnei Shai, Shem Ritva. Um, anyway, back to our subject. Another situation. It's a picture number 276. So, Rashi said that any domain that's between, uh, between two domains. So it's hard to use it. It's a 10 hand breadth. Here is less than 10 hand breadth. Here is a 10 hand breadth. So it's hard to use it in both. This one have the length of 10, which is too high for them. Okay? Yes. And, and this one, again, it's hard because it's 10. So the only way to use it is by throwing. So it's not neither one, it's easy. Or another option says picture number 277. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, so he said this one. See this is one. You have here ten hand breath, you have a ten hand breath. This is the two properties. So Rashi said, So this is height in 10, and this is the 10th. So you see how you have to go between one to another. So it's kind of um, lowering an object down, and by the resident of that courtyard, only by... Um, by uh, Throwing. So Amarav Shneem Asurim, Rav said that both of them, um, both of the resident um, uh, cannot use it, prohibited. Shmuel said that they use the area granted to those who can um, reach by lowering. Uh, it's uh, relatively easy for them to lower object to it and therefore it used in more convenience for the other we must throw on to and it's used the more the meaning anything was used is convenience for one party and more the meaning for another party one provides to that one who's used it uh, um, uh, of it is convenient so basically, as we said, we go by the convenience in the, in all different dimension. We always go by the convenient. Tnan. Anshei Chatzer veanshei Mirpeset. We said that the people, the resident of the houses that open directly into a courtyard and the resident of the apartment that open into a balcony from which stairs lead down to that courtyard, so they shachechu um, velo irvu. So they said, <coughs> one second. Um, yes, kol she gavua asarat fachim amir pesed pachod mikan lechatzer. 
So they said that uh, anything that a courtyard is a ten hand breadth high below, be, below, belongs to the balcony. Anything that less than high belongs to the courtyard. So um, all, all of that is part of what we said in the Mishnah. So the Gemara said, Kasalka de Atach, my Mirpeset. So what the meaning of the Mishnah when they use the word a, a balcony. So here again, go back to the book. They said, you see, picture number 278. Bnei Aliyah. Rashi said, the Gvihim Mirpeset Tuva. אבל דרך מרפסת זו עולים ויורדים, ותל שבחצר שהוא גבוה עשרה, ואבן נמוך מן עלייה עשרה, דאה ולזה בשלשול ולזה בזריקה, וקטנה דבין העלייה מותרים בו. אוקיי? So, these are the people that need to throw. People here need to put it, um, 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 hand it down, ascend. Down, and this is the balcony. So uh, this is the throwing ascend, and this is the descend. Clear? Yes. So they said, "Alma kol zeh b'shilshul, zeh b'zrikan." Not nim otol zeh she b'shilshul. So any time you have a situation like that that um, you have one throw and one uh, lowering, you go, we grant Shabbat use for those who can use it by lowering, which means that the resident of the upper story who use the area of ten and breath high do so by means of lowering. So the Mishnah supports Shmuel and present a difficulty to Rav. So the Gemara rejected, and they said, "Kid Amar Rav Una, lo tam adarim b'mir peset, hachenamei lo tam adarim b'mir peset." So Rav Una rejected it, and he said, "When you're talking about those residents who live in the apartment upper, that open directly into the balcony, rather than one who live in the upper story, here too, we can speak about those in the apartment that open directly." Unto the balcony, so the the use of an area of ten hand breadth high is convenience for the residents of the balcony, as uh, it is on their uh, level, whereas it is relatively inconvenient for the resident of the courtyard. Consequently, the right to use this area granted to the resident of the balcony. So um, basically. Um, uh, the Gemara asks, Amai. So they said, um, What do you do if it's a lower than this? So, they use the both for the entrance. Mai lechatzer, af lechatzer, ushnehem asurim. So when you said it's less than 10, belong to that. No. So again, what we are talking about? We ask if that is the domain of the residence of both. The courtyard and the balconies is a mount or embarked is positioned near the, the enough to the balcony. So the both residents use it. So what's the meaning of the phrase to the courtyard? It means also the courtyard. Rashi here also used the word klomar. Look at my book. But the consequently residents of both courtyard and the balcony can use it. So they said, Ushnei Masurim, they both are prohibited to carry on Shabbat. So again, you talk about the measurement, how far it is from that balcony in order for them to use it. So, again, I just go over to make sure that we all understand. 
What we said, אחי נאמר מסתר ומקטע נסה ומרד ואומרים בסמוכה ולמופלגת אפילו גבוה עשרה טפחים לחצר. So what we said, that it's, that we understand that they all apply, that this chuliat abor, this rock, it's close, very close to the balcony. But if it's a distance, that it's a ten hand breath, it belongs to the courtyard. So he said here, Hachinam emay lechatzer, af lechatzer. So here also in the Mishnah, when they talk about low tel namuch, that it's less than ten hand breath, may lechatzer, what does that mean, courtyard? It has to be af lechatzer. Ushnehem asurim, it's also the courtyard, and therefore both sets of residents in both um, are prohibited, Ushnehem asurim, either from it or to it. And he said, Shma mina, so we can learn from the end of this Mishnah that the word lechatzer mean af lechatzer, which means that they uh, also to the courtyard. So, lechatzer, it uh, has to be af lechatzer. Now we're going to a practical halachot. First halacha is isa lafrashat chala, a door that you need to take a, a part to give a tie. As you know that um, we have the mitzvah of fashat chala, and nowadays too, in some levels people observe it. In those days they had to give it to the uh, priest. So the question is, what exactly the measurement we need to take, put aside for that purpose? So they said, this is the Shulchan Oruch Yor, 324. Chala must be separate from dough that is a volume of at least 43 and 1 uh, fifth egg bag. This amount is measured, the Rashba said, amount of flour that has been uh, flattened on top. In precise, chala is separated without a blessing from dough containing 1.25 kilogram of flour. It is separated with a blessing from dough that contains 1.75 kilogram of flour. Chala is not separated from dough that contains less than one and a quarter kilogram of flour. <coughs> we discuss also a, a re, the situation of two residents, residents of the balcony and the residents <coughs> of the courtyard. And Shei Chatzer and Shei Mirpeset, She Shachechu Velo Irvu. So, when you're dealing with a post that is located in a courtyard and belongs to both, to the courtyard and the balcony, both of those residents did not establish and join a roof, so if the post is not ten and breath high, the resident of the courtyard rendered up, it is prohibited for the residents of the balcony to carry any utensils that was located in a house when Shabbat began and vice versa. But if the post is a four hand breath away from the house, so uh, the Bet Yosef said and the Magen Avraham said, that it belongs to both groups because the inhabitants of the balcony can use it by throwing objects onto it. Now you see here that the tour in Shulchan Harav maintain if the post stands at a distance of four hand breadth from the balcony or if it is lower than ten hand breadth from the balcony, it may be used exclusively by the residents of the courtyard. So again, you see, uh, um, it's, uh, the distance is crucial. We said also, the Magid Mishnah said in the Rambam, Sefer Zmanim El Chotaruvim, chapter 3, When a mount or a post in a, a courtyard can be used by two separate groups of people, one group by lowering items down to it, and the other group by throwing items it onto it, both groups are prohibited to use it. That's the halacha, the opinion of Rav, and the case involving a uh, prohibitions. The last halacha of today is Shulchan Aruch 375. They, uh, <coughs> those uh, to use a mount of posts in a courtyard, the same halacha applies to the resident of, the, of a balcony 
as those who live in an upper story. That's the Ravuna, which means that if the Mount of Pos is ten and breadth high, the right to use it belongs solely to the resident of the balcony or upper story. Shem